Welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today it's all about gnocchi. So gnocchi is something that I had for the very first time, maybe 10 years ago, and I, I didn't know what they were. Uh, believe it or not, we're actually at one of those big chain restaurants, and uh, one of my buddies ordered it as a side. I'm like, what the heck are these things? And the first time I tried them, I fell in love. So what they are, they should be these really light, delicate, kind of fluffy potato dumplings. It's like a pasta that's made with potato. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're going to make two different kinds of gnocchi today. We're going to make a traditional kind made with some potatoes, and we're going to make a ricotta gnocchi. I'm going to make two different sauces to go with those. One's going to be a really quick brown butter sauce. It's very, very simple. A little bit of sage, a little bit of prosciutto in there. And that's about it. The other one we're going to make is going to be a pink sauce with some uh, Italian sausage. So we're going to get started with our ricotta gnocchi. They're called ricotta gnocchi because they're made with ricotta. So instead of using potato, we're going to use ricotta. So I have some ricotta cheese here. I have about a pound or so of ricotta cheese. One of the things that's going to help give this a lot of flavor is some good cheese. All right, we have a ricotta, but we're also going to add some of this. And this is Grana Padano is this cheese, and it is a fantastic cheese. It's in the style kind of of a Parmigiano Reggiano. It doesn't age quite as long, but it's, it's an Italian cheese. It's from a, uh, a regulated area, so it can be only made at specific spots in Italy. And it's the only place it can be made in the entire world just like Parmigiano Reggiano, just like champagne is example. So I'm gonna grate some here. And we're gonna look for about two ounces or so, which is gonna give us, I don't know, a cup or so of grated real quick. All right, that looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in here. Might not use all of it. That looks good. I just want to combine this a little bit. And what I have here are two eggs that have been beaten up. I'm going to pour those right in there. Like so. And I'm just going to combine this a little bit. So, so far nothing, nothing too complicated here. So I want to get this pretty well mixed up. Because once I add my flour, as soon as we start mixing it, we're going to start developing gluten. Now, we are, we are going to develop some gluten. We have this has to get mixed. It has to get kneaded a little bit. But we don't want to overmix it because we're going to end up, we're going to get rid of that soft pillowiness we're looking for. I have here about a cup and a quarter of flour. And I'm going to add about a cup or so, and then we'll see where we're at. Move this out of the way. I'm just going to kind of fold it over on itself, just until it starts to come together. So we're essentially we're making a dough. Looks like we're going to need a little bit more flour. Not too much though. Now this is not something where we're going to keep our hands from getting dirty. So it's time now we're going to just pour this out right on our board. I'll scrape out what's in our bowl. And now I'm going to start working it with my hands a bit. And I want to see, it still is a little soft, so we're going to add some more flour here. We just want this to come together. Just enough so it doesn't fall apart. All right, we're still a little wetter than I want. So that's a, that's a big thing when you're making something like a ricotta gnocchi. Using different brands of the ricotta cheese, some have more moisture, some have less. So this is going to use more than the recipe calls for, but that's all right. It's just something to be aware of. And I'm going to remove part of this because we're not going to need all this for tonight. I'm just going to kind of incorporate this all together. Beautiful. Okay, now, now what we're going to do is I'm going to take my knife, just cut that, and I'm going to roll this out. And it's all right to be rolling it out right on this board with all this flour on there. That's going to actually help us. All right, just like that. 
we're going to go through, I'm going to put just a little bit of flour just from my board right on my knife and go through and cut these. A bench scraper is a great tool to use for this as well. There you go, we caught a gnocchi, done. Very quick, very simple. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna roll up the rest of these, clean up my hands. We'll get some boiling water going and I'll show you how to cook them. All right, so I finished rolling out our gnocchi. I cleaned up a little bit of my mess. You can see these came out real nice. Nice little pillowy dumplings. One of the things you wanna think about is what are you going to do with your gnocchi after you're done? So these are gonna end up going in our brown butter sauce. So I'm gonna cook these now. So I have some water here that's almost to a boil. These gnocchi are totally raw, just like you saw me leave them last. I just made a couple more. Uh, one thing I did forget to add to this, which it's a shame, but it's, it's uh, so, so tasty in there. It's just a little bit of fresh nutmeg. So we'll do that on the next batch. But our water's come to a boil here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide our gnocchi in. Gently trying to keep them from sticking to each other. And we're just gonna plop them right in there like that. Now, the way you know they're done is they float. It's simple as that. We're just gonna leave them, it should be about three minutes or so, and they'll float up to the top. Since we're not gonna eat these immediately, what we're going to do is we're gonna shock them. By putting them in this ice water, we're gonna completely stop as quickly as possible the cooking process so that they don't overcook on us. And it'll also help to set them so they get nice and firm. So we're going to let those hang out just for a moment, get this out of the way. We're going to start our more traditional gnocchi. So I'm going to grab the potatoes out of the oven. Now I made a conscious decision on the type of potato we're using here tonight. So this is a baker potato or a russet potato or an Idaho potato. All the same kind of thing. The reason we want these is because they have a low amount of moisture and a high amount of starch. So right away, I'm going to take these. And I just want to cut them right open. And you should see some steam coming out of them because they are still hot. And we want them to be hot. This is a time when you want to work relatively quickly. Because our goal here is to get rid of as much moisture as we possibly can inside this potato so we have a nice dry potato so that we don't have to add too much flour to it so we really get a potato flavor. So. One of the things I did first was I poked all the skin with a fork before I baked them. Baked them for an hour or so at 350, depending on the size of your potato. So we want to let some of that moisture out. Poking them is going to let some of the moisture out. These are almost starting to come to the top. So now I'm going to take, and I have my ricer here, and I'm going to take my potatoes and I'm going to just scoop the flesh out right into this. Still kind of working as quickly as reasonably possible. These did cool in the oven. For a couple minutes, I don't have Superman hands. So our gnocchi are done. I can see them coming to the top. Just because we're not gonna cook another batch right this moment, I'm gonna shut this water off. And you can see them floating right in there. And that's it. These are so incredibly simple, these ricotta ones in particular. Doesn't make too much of a mess. You make a little mess on your hands, a little mess on the cutting board, but that's all right. There we go. I'm just going to let those sit there for a couple minutes. I'm going to go right back to what I was doing, getting as much of this out as I can, as quickly as I can. Now these aren't that difficult to make either, and you don't, you don't have to go through all these steps, but to get a really good potato flavored dumpling that's nice and light and fluffy, it helps to go through this and try to work quickly. Try to get this out of here as quick as you can, because we're gonna look for them to actually cool off as quickly as we can too. All right, so that's gonna be enough for what we're doing. Now what I'm gonna do is, Move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'm gonna take my ricer. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna rice this right onto our board. I'm gonna spread it all over the place. It 
If you want to make super, super smooth mashed potatoes, this is the tool right here. Just send your potatoes right through the ricer. All right, now we can take a semi deep breath because we're going to let this sit here and cool just for a moment. Now I have here one egg yolk that's just been beat up a little bit. And these have cooled down enough that it's not, I'm not worried it's going to cook my egg. So I'm going to drizzle this right over the top, just like so. Get the last little bits out of it. One thing I neglected to mention was this water that we cooked our first gnocchi in is incredibly salty. Remember, our gnocchi don't have any salt in them initially. So the water that we put them in has a lot of salt in it, and so does the water that we're shocking them in. We're fortunate to have one of my students from Blackstone Valley Tech with us today, Emily Schlepper. So she's here helping out. So I'm going to ask her to come over here and actually just grab these so we can take them out of our shocking liquid. They can come up and give a wave too. But here's Emily. She's been helping out. So we're happy to have her, but we can just drain those out. Then I have here about a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. Yeah, now so you, I'm going to use just my knife, and I'm going to kind of fold it over on itself. Then, once again, we're going to get our hands dirty a bit. And what we're looking for is that it just holds together. And this is going to be good. Now this is something that takes a little bit of practice to make and to get used to so you know exactly what the texture should be. Now I'm going to use my knife and just, we'll start with about half of this because this is almost where we want it to be. I just want to flour my bench a little bit. And I'm going to take this and roll it out. Get some of that out of there. So what we're going to do with these ones now, oh yeah, that's perfect, is we're going to take these, we want to make these about the same thickness as our last ones. But now we're going to take them and cut them. And we're going to use this, which is a gnocchi board. So the last ones we just kind of left in this shape, more or less. These ones we're going to take and we're going to stick and put on our gnocchi board and just use our thumb and kind of roll them off like this. And what we'll get is a little gnocchi that's Got lines on one side, and it's got a little indention on the other side. So we're going to take a minute. I'm going to finish rolling these out. I'm going to roll out a bunch of these gnocchis. We'll get them all looking nice, and I'll show you how we'll cook these, and we'll get to making both of our sauces. All right, so I went through and rolled out some more. I made them pretty big. You can see these guys. It's a pretty good-sized gnocchi. You don't have to make them that big. You can also take them and actually freeze them right at this point, spread them out on a sheet pan, put them in the freezer after they're frozen solid, just wrap them in little baggies. But I made some big ones. I'm gonna make some smaller ones here. I'm just going down and cutting them. Now the reason for using the gnocchi board is because, well, let me see if I can do this here. So we're just gonna take it and roll it off our thumb and make these tiny little dumplings. And you can see there's a little like punt in the bottom of them. These lines in this little punt that's in here is all part of the sauce sucking procedure here. Because we're looking that that little piece is going to fill up with sauce, whatever that sauce might be. All these little lines are going to fill up with sauce. So I'm just going to keep rolling these right off the board here. And you'll notice that I put it on there and I'm putting the side of my thumb on the cut part because there's a little bit of moisture there and just rolling it off. Now this water is boiling so I'm going to slide these first batch of gnocchi, the large ones in there. You can see I have another ice bath here. So I'll make a few more of these. Just keep rolling them right off here. And I won't take any more time to do any more of those, but you get the general idea. Now you don't have to do that. Those first ricotta gnocchi, we just went and cut real quick. You can also cut them the same way. 
and I don't have a fork sitting right here, but you can roll them right off the back of the fork if you don't fork if you don't have one of these gnocchi boards. These are nice because they have more lines and you'll get more of little indentations, but you know, a three or four tong fork will just work perfectly as well. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. Move those out of the way. The next thing we want to do is we want to start making our sauce. So the first sauce we're going to make, which is one that's a little bit more complex, is going to be the sauce that has our sausage in it. So I'm going to get a new cutting board so I don't cross contaminate this stuff here. I'm going to use my knife that's dirty with my pasta. I'm not overly concerned about it at this point. I'm not going to go back and use it for pasta. I'm not going to use it for anything else before I wash it. So I have here, actually I want to turn on my pan. I have here just some Italian sausage, some store-bought Italian sausage. So I'm going to take it and just cut it into smaller pieces. Now this is one option is to go through and just slice it like this. If you want to get really nice pieces, you can actually throw it right in your pasta water if you want for two or three minutes just to get it to set a little bit. But another thing you can do and what we're going to do with the rest of it is we're going to just take, use the tip of our knife and just get the meat of the sausage out of there. Because I like this better and you know what, sometimes the sausage, in particular these store bought ones, don't have a, I don't know if the case is just not super fresh or what the deal is, but sometimes it's difficult to get that out. Or sometimes it's a little difficult to chew is what I should say. All right, so I'm going to ask my assistant Emily to come up here again and to save our gnocchi and go ahead and scoop them out. It looks like they're boiling. You can take a peek. As soon as she puts that spoon in there, this, the foam will go down a little bit. And if you can see, are they floating? Yep, perfect. Go ahead and pull those out. Yep, right in the ice bath. And this is enough sausage for what we're going to do. Beautiful. Those look perfect. Perfect, perfect. So obviously, these smaller ones are going to cook a lot more quickly than the larger ones. So we're not going to cook them both at the same time. So we cook this, these monster ones first. I'm going to go back and cook these more uh, reasonable sized ones. So we're going to take another break. We're going to have Emily get the rest of these out. We'll cook our little ones. We're going to start to brown our sausage and we'll come back and start putting all these things together. All right, so we cleaned up our mess a little bit more, finished browning our sausage, so we got a little bit of color on there, broke it all up. This is exactly what we want. So this is cooked. We're just going to leave it off to the side. We're going to put it in our sauce after. So we're going to start to build our sauce a little bit. I'm going to take a little knob of butter, a tablespoon or so, and put it into our pan, which is just barely warm. Get this out of the way. And we're going to start out by sweating some garlic. So I have a whole head of garlic here. I'm just going to kind of move my hands around and peel off a lot of this outer paper. Now, all we need is we're just going to use one big clove. I'm going to bring our trash over here, get rid of all that. So what I'm going to do is to take this, and there's always this kind of woody part on the end. I'm going to cut that off. Then I'm going to lay this on its side, and I'm just going to give it a little tap. And what that does is it breaks the clove, and it cracks the skin so the clove comes right up. So got one clove of garlic there. So now I'm going to take, now I'm going to smash it real well. But I'm going to be careful that, so this bolster, this fatter part of my knife right here, I want to make sure that that is off my cutting board so that it can sit flush. If it's not, then it's up in the air a little bit. So I'm just going to put it here and give it a good smash. And then I'm going to take and just give it a quick chop. Now, this is fine for what we're going to do. We're going to let it sweat. It's going to get rid of some of its flavor. But I'm going to show you another little trick that you can do. And that is to add a little bit of salt to it. Because nothing you're going to cook with garlic that you're not going to add salt to. I can't think of anything, at least. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the side of my knife. And I'm going to press it against the cutting board like this. And just grab a little bit at a time. And what I'm doing is making a paste. So the salt is actually working as an abrasive, just like sandpaper. So we can make it into a paste. Now if we want it super fine, we can go back, give it a little chop, and go back and do the same thing. I'm not overly concerned about it. So this is going to go right into here, right into our butter. 
Oops. So is this. Now I'm going to turn this up a bit because now I can pay attention to it. And so what I'm looking for now is I just want to sweat this garlic. I want it to release some of its flavor into this butter that we have here. And right away, oh man, you can smell that. It smells good. I'm going to add a little bit more butter to this. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add about half a stick, a little less than half a stick of butter to our other saucepan. Now this other saucepan is where we're going to make our brown butter eventually. We're not going to do anything with that quite at this moment. Now, I want to keep an eye on this because I don't want my garlic to brown at all. Because it starts to get a little bit of this. Sometimes we actually want that little bit of bitterness from your garlic. This is not one of them. And you know what? While we're at it, I might as well start making our brown butter. We'll make that right there. And if you look how fast it just started melting. So that other pan wasn't even on. This is when an induction range, I know I've talked about the induction before a few times, but it, it's just so cool because it works with magnets essentially. It makes the iron actually warm up. So this, these pans have to have a certain amount of iron in them. All right, this has started to brown just a little bit. I'm gonna add some heavy cream to this. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan for this one. So this is kind of like making an Alfredo sauce. We're gonna let this reduce a bit. But it's cool. So it actually, this cooktop doesn't get hot. I can put my hand right on here and it's not hot. But the pan gets hot because what happens is the magnets actually vibrate the metal in the, the iron in the pan and it creates friction and it heats up. So cool. Boils water super fast. All right, so this is only on about medium heat and that's where we want it. I can turn this one up now. Now I'm not worried about our garlic browning because we have our cream in there, which is gonna prevent that. At this point, we already added some salt with our garlic, so I'm not gonna add any more salt until we taste it. But I'm gonna add some pepper. I like some fresh ground pepper. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce this. The whole idea of reducing this is that some of this, you can see the steam coming off. Some of this water vapor is gonna come off, but it's gonna leave our fat. It's gonna leave the cream. It's gonna leave all the flavor back in there. And the, this is gonna get just a little bit thicker because this is essentially our sauce. This is one of my favorite all-time sauces. So it's essentially an Alfredo, and then we're gonna add some tomatoes to it. We're gonna use some of our Grana Padano cheese. Not quite yet, this needs to reduce a bit more. Don't be afraid to go out and spend some money on cheese. This was relatively expensive, this Grana Padano, but you saw that little hunk that I ground up that made all this. This is you know, almost one of those little cans of the pre-ground stuff you get at the supermarket. Don't be afraid to use the real stuff because it's, it's well worth it. All right, so now check this one out. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of brown color on the side there. That's exactly what we want. We're creating a brown butter. You'll know that it's working because you can actually see some of those butter solids turning brown a little bit. I'm just gonna swirl this around a bit. And this is exactly where we want it. So right at this point, I'm gonna add our ricotta gnocchi right to that. And take these and give them a quick toss in this. And so being in this brown butter is what's actually gonna warm them up. So this, this is unsalted butter. I wanna salt this and salt them. Remember we salted our gnocchi a little bit. So we're gonna let those sit and actually let them just brown just a bit. This is almost reduced enough. First to add our tomatoes. Actually, excuse me, we're gonna add our cheese first. Now that we've added our cheese, we're gonna turn our heat very low because we don't want this to break. You can see how thick it got real quick just from adding that little bit of cheese to it. Give these a little shake. Oh yeah, now you can see we're getting some good color on these. Now 
come and add our tomatoes. And this is what gives a little bit of pinkness. This is what I like, just a little bit of acidity. And I actually really prefer canned tomatoes for this, canned diced tomatoes. And watch how the sauce all of a sudden changes. Now this thins it out just a bit. All right, now we're ready to add our other gnocchi, which are our, our big daddies here. We'll slide those right in there. I'm just gonna take a look at these. Yeah, these are looking great. So we're gonna let these sit. We're all done with our whisk now. I'm just gonna use this little ladle because that's what I happen to have next to me here. And I wanna coat these and let these warm up kind of gently. This is the time now that I'm gonna add our sausage. So I'm gonna take a minute. We're gonna let these finish browning. I'm gonna actually grab our other gnocchi. I don't have them right in front of me right now, our other small ones, and we can mix them together. We'll let it all heat up together. We'll have Arthur up here and we'll see what he thinks of our homemade gnocchi. Hey Arthur. Hi Matt, welcome back. Thanks again for having me here at Hudson Plant on Gnocchi Day. Gnocchi Day. Gnocchi are these little potato dumplings traditionally. So we have some traditional ones with some Italian sausage and some tomatoes and kind of like a, almost an Alfredo sauce. And then we have these that are made with ricotta cheese. So what I have here are some, just some oven roasted tomatoes. I'm gonna take and just toss in here. These are at room temperature. So these are just coated with some brown butter. We let them brown a bit. Okay. And this is all we're gonna do. Very, very simple. Just garnish those. Just like that. And you know what? I'm gonna slide this over and let you go ahead and take a whirl and see what you think. And while we're at it, I'm gonna add some fresh basil to this one and just toss it around. So that one's actually all ricotta cheese, no potato in there. And just some butter that we left brown a little bit. Very good. This, these are outstanding. And put a little bit of our fresh basil right on top there. Oh, one thing I forgot, I was gonna put just a bit of cheese over the top. Now it's a different plate. That's a whole different thing. We'll put a little more on there too. All right. And then this is the more traditional one. There are some that are real big. For those of you at home, you can see the difference between this little guy here and one of these large ones. And is this sweet sausage or hot sausage? It's sweet sausage, good, good question. Sweet Italian sausage. You could definitely do it with the hot if you want them. Oh, that's really good. Really good. Give that for a little more. Gonna try the uh, sausage. What do you think of the sausage? Now that's wicked, wicked good. 